This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. The views conveyed by the guest on this program do not necessarily represent the views of the host or owners of the Doggy Diva Show and do not necessarily constitute endorsement of products. Medical information shared by the guests on this program are those of the guests and are for informational purposes only. They should not replace the medical advice of your veterinarian. Hi, this is Susan Marie from the Doggy Diva Show. This episode features helpful advice for Pet First Aid Awareness Month and when best to transition from puppy food to adult food. That's what's on our show, so let's get started. Come here, babies. It's time for a treat, the Doggy Diva Show. Here's national award-winning author and animal advocate, Susan Marie. Hi, welcome to the Doggy Diva Show, the show for animal lovers. I'm your host, Susan Marie, and as always, I'm joined by my canine co-hosts, the Doggy Divas themselves. Thank you for joining us today as we bring you the experts in the pet and animal world right to you. Contact us at thedoggydiva.com. That's the D-O-G-G-Y D-I-V-A dot com. We love hearing from you. So go grab a cup of coffee and your pet's favorite treat, and we'll be back in just a moment. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. With us to share timely and important tips for pets and pet parents is Monica Layton, president of Professional Pet Sitting. Hey, Monica, how are you? Hi, great. And you and I have talked about this many times, the pet first aid, what to have in your kit, how to react to things. In April being pet first aid awareness month, I thought this would be a great time to bring all this to the pet parents out there who are listening to us, some great information so that they too will be prepared. Absolutely. So whether it's, you know, a weekend and your vet's closed or you're out camping or hiking and you're just you know, enjoying life and, you know, something comes up to where your pet has an injury or needs first aid, it's always great to be prepared and know what to do. That way you get the pet taken care of, you can get them stabilized until they can see their veterinarian and less stress than the whole situation. Because of course, when your pets get hurt, it's always stressful. So I tell clients, they have some great resources around that they can check out. I always recommend that if you have a pet in the home, you can go online, you can go on YouTube. They have great classes, but I always recommend if they know how to do the Heimlich maneuver for their pet or they know pet CPR, two huge things that can save a pet's life. Everybody, I think, should really, really know how to do those if possible. And again, there's so many different things out there to where you can really, you know, learn how to do it. And they have some wonderful classes. Almost every city has them. They're put on local community centers and vets offices even, you know, have them emergency centers, you know, pet shelters, all great resources to, you know, have local classes at and they often switch around to areas. So they're very easy to find. And again, a lot of great resources online too. And if you can learn, you know, your pet CPR and your Heimlich, then the rest, you know, as far as stabilizing the pet can hopefully be found in your pet first aid kit, which everybody should have. Again, if you're traveling, you know, having something that you can take with you that's portable and things, you know, to go inside that pest first aid kit, your gauze bandages, your tapes, antiseptic lotions and sprays, gauze rolls. That way, you know, if you have a pet that injures a leg or something, you can roll it and stabilize it. Non-stick pads, some scissors, cotton balls and swabs if you need to get anything out of ears or you know, out of uh, a nose or all things come in handy. A thermometer is great. 
and always, you know, anti-diarrheal medication, pediatric electrolytes, like a Pedialyte um, for dehydration. I always recommend having hydrogen peroxide in there. That way, if your pet does get into something toxic and, you know, you contact a vet or contact Pet Poison Helpline, if they do tell you to administer, you know, something for vomiting, then that, you know, should have worked for that. Always a plastic syringe or an eyedropper, something that you can administer liquids out of. Antacids for, you know, upset stomachs that are safe for your pet. Antihistamines like Benadryl, things like antibiotic cream or ointment. That way you can help with a wound care. And then hydrocortisone cream to help with insect bites and stings. Of course, some, um, you know, non-latex gloves for you, keep everything sterile for your pet, some ice packs some sterile saline solution. That way, if you uh, your pet gets something in their eye, you can hopefully wash it out, you know, with the saline solution, tweezers, and of course, septic powder or a little pencil. You know, at home, we get calls so often, you know, clients upset, oh, you know, my pet split, it's, you know, it got its nail caught on something and it broke and it's split in half and it's losing so much blood. And so your septic powder or septic pencils are great for that you know, a pair of nail clippers. That way, you know, if that does happen, you can cut the nail to right where the split is and kind of put the septic powder on there and make it stop bleeding. Your veterinarian's emergency information, information for the pet poison helpline, all great things to keep in your first aid kit. Little pet first aid books are great. And I always suggest, you know, a copy of your pet's vaccine history and medical records. That way, if you are traveling and you do have to go to an emergency clinic or have that information available and you're not right at home or going to your own local veterinarian, that you have everything that you'll need to give them to show them your pet's medical history. And that's also important. And again, you talked about the CPR. I had taken it a few years ago. They were doing it like locally around here when Francesca had something happened to her in the middle of the night and I used my pet CPR on her and we brought her into the vet early in the morning and she said she saved her life. It was something that I never thought I'd need, but I did need. And it's something that you could do online. I think that they have YouTube classes and they have other classes that you could take. Contact your local, maybe humane society. Ours was Mm -hmm. done through a local humane society and you and I know who the teacher was. She was very, very good. And yes, yes she's very, very good. And um, and I told her, I saw her after that. And I said, you helped me save her life. You helped me save Brandy's life. And it was, you never know when you're going to put it, you're going to need it. But it's always better to be prepared and you can get your certification in it. But it's also very important to have all of this stuff in your pet first aid kit. Monica, there's always something that could go wrong and all of this stuff We also have one that you could just buy. We bought it online, but we added a number of things to it because there's a lot of things that you and I have talked about on the show that you've brought to my attention that I've included in there. So mine's bulging, but that's okay. And you and I (laughs) at a later date are going to talk about the importance of having this already in case there's a pet or an emergency, like a a weather emergency, or you never know what's going to come up. So we'll be talking about that at another time, but it's always, always important to have this on hand and also have the pet poison helpline number on hand and to have all your pet emergency hospital as well as your vets. You should have all of these numbers in your phone so that you don't have to go searching for them. I think that it's very important that we be prepared So that when something strikes and you're never prepared, you know, you think, oh, that's never going to happen. Well, take it from me. It does. (laughs) So Monica, we had talked about the pet poison hotline a couple of shows ago. Can you give that out to the listeners again so that they could put it in their phones or have it ready if something does happen so that they could put it right in their pet first aid kit? Absolutely. It's petpoisonhelpline.com. And the phone number is 1-855-764-7661. Thank you. This is also important. And of course, make sure that if anything happens, you call your vet first. Do that so that you could respond. They'll guide you or they'll have a service on their phone so that it will guide you as to what to do. So again, Monica, I thank you very much. It's April. We could have all of our little pet first aid kits put together here and you gave us some great tips and great information on what to have in them. Because like I said, you may never think you're going to need it, but it's better to be prepared. 
Yes, absolutely. As always, Monica, you brought us great information and I thank you so much and we will talk to you soon. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment. Hello, everyone. Susan Marie here to tell you about the award-winning three-book series, The Doggy Diva Diaries. It is a trilogy of heartwarming and inspirational stories about Miss Olive, a lonely little rescue pup, hoping to find her forever family and friends and a life filled with love. In this series, Miss Olive learns that it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, it's the kindness and love you have on the inside that counts. Available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other online booksellers. And please visit us at thedoggydiva.com for more information. Thank you, everyone. Coming up, have you wondered when the best time to transition from puppy food to adult dog food is? We've got the answers. Molly, here's your dinner. <coughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Doggy Diva Show. As a pet parent, I want to ensure my pup's nutritional needs are met throughout all stages of their life. With us today to help pet parents such as myself know the best time to transition pups from puppy food to adult food is Kim Gablin, K-Line Relations Specialist at Bill Jack Foods. Hey, Kim, welcome back. Great to be on with you. Well, and I know that this is a really important topic because I think that people get a little confused or maybe are not quite sure when is the right time to um, to transition their pups into adult dog food. So I thank you so much for coming on and talking to us about this. Now, what are some of the unique needs of a puppy and what can we do to properly care for them and keep them healthy and safe? We know, first of all, I think that it's really important to start with nutrition as a key basis for your puppies. So, you know, as puppies grow, they have special nutritional needs. You know, that first year of life that you can't do it over. You know, we always talk about that, like it's you can't do a redo. I mean, you kind of take it for granted they're going to grow and everything's going to be okay. But being able to feed them a good, healthy food is really important for them to be able to grow up, you know, and be how they should be, right, to reach their full potential. So, you know, you're going to want to look for a puppy food with a high quality protein. So we always say you should have an animal protein as the first ingredient. So as chicken or beef or fish as that first ingredient. At Bill Jack, we believe in chicken. We believe chicken is a very high quality protein for dogs. And so that's what we use. And we have several varieties of puppy food to choose from. So if you have a smaller puppy, um, there's small breed puppy food. If you have a larger puppy, which is 50 pounds and over, you would look for a large breed puppy food. And if you have some, some dogs are between that 20 and 50 pounds, then our puppy select would probably be the, the proper food for them. If you have a little bit more of a picky puppy, and maybe they're a little more choosy about their food, we do have a picky no more all breed puppy that we recently launched. So um, so that's, you know, that's always kind of important because sometimes, you know, puppies can can be a little distracted as they grow and learn, you know, and have lots of other things to do besides eat. Um, so that's, a, that's an important thing to do. If you have adult dogs in your house, I mean, sometimes it can be a challenge trying to feed everybody and, uh, and make sure that your puppy is getting the nutrition they need. And so, uh, we do have a couple of our formulas, like our Bill Jack sensitive solution formulas are good for puppies and adults. So you can feed your whole household sensitive solutions. And then that's an easy way to be able to kind of manage that, that challenge, right, of having younger dogs and, you know, adult dogs in the same household. Secondly, for puppies, a training. Training is really a key foundation to keeping your dogs safe and to helping them, you know, know what to expect. So you want to be able to help them understand that, hey, when, you know, um, I'm trying to get your attention, you need to come 
you know, or you need to sit and stay. I mean, sit and stay are very important because when you go outside, if there's something that distracts them, you want to be able to tell them to stop, to sit, to stay, right? You want to keep them out of danger. You want them to learn how to drop it. You know, there are some very key kind of training pieces that are very important to your dog's safety. It's it's also good to be able to have a happy household and a dog that listens. But, you know, obviously that's a, that's a big thing. And then, you know, there's all the third thing is that puppy energy. <laughs> so, you know, they have so much energy and they just they just run and run and run and run like a wind up toy and then they just pass out. <laughs> So, so it's really important to kind of get them that exercise, you know, to, to, to let them let that energy out and to, you know, to, to be able to teach them how to walk on a leash, obviously, as you're doing your training, um, doing the, some walking and get them outside to play some catch. And that's really important. And uh, last but not least, I would say a healthy dose of patience is important. <laughs> Um, you know, uh, that's, uh, you know, repetition is the mother of skill. Uh, you have to have a little bit of patience, right? When they're three months old, nine months old, you know, a year old, you know, they kind of have those puppy kind of energy and kind of feelings for those first few years, even if they've already grown up and they're full grown nutritionally, they might still be acting like a puppy. Um, it's really important to kind of have that patience and love and tenderness um, that you have with them. That's really important too. Yeah, those are all such important things. And and you're right, puppies have boundless, boundless energy. <laughs> so it's best to be very sensitive and keep on your toes on that. That's great. Now, when is it the best time to switch to adult food, take them from a puppy food to an adult food? There are a couple things to think about when you're making that change from puppy to adult. And there really depends on two things. One is your puppy's age. And then secondly, it's their breed mix. Small and large puppies, I know if you can think about it, right? Small and large puppies develop at different rates. So, you know, small dogs, obviously they grow pretty quickly, but they do it usually over about a nine to 12 month period, right? So they're usually done by the time they're 12 months old. And so, you know, dogs 20 pounds and, and lighter, right? If you have a, a larger dog though, let's say 50 pounds and over, those dogs, they tend to grow, they could grow for as long as 18 months, so, um, so very different, you know, obviously they grow much larger, right, than the smaller dog does, but it takes them longer to get there because of that. So, um, so what we recommend is, you know, if you have a smaller breed dog, that's up to 20 pounds when they're full grown, you know, at mature age, then we would recommend that you would switch somewhere around, you know, 10 months to a year, you know, when you see that that puppy of yours is no longer really growing, you know, so that that's when you want to change. For a medium breed between 20 and 50 pounds, you would want to look at switching somewhere around a year of age, right? So somewhere around that 12 month period, you're going to want to make that switch. And then when we're talking about large dogs, um, definitely that 12 month period, you know, 50 pounds and over. If you start to be in that, those giant breeds, then I would probably say closer to 18 months. So, so it really, again, depends on the age and your breed, your dog's breed about how, um, how and when you want to switch them over to their adult food. Now, how do pet parents safely make the switch to adult foods so that their pups transition smoothly, like digestively and, you know, everything goes well? Yeah, that's a big thing, right? You don't want to, you don't want to start any stomach upset when you're making no. that change. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, so when it's time to, to switch from puppy food to adult food, you know, you want to identify kind of the right food for your best friend. So, um, you know, we were just talking about matching your dog's size, right, with, with the right formula. So you don't need a breed-specific dog food, but their size does make a difference, right, in their metabolism and kind of the kind of food that you should feed them. So you know, just like we were talking about, you know, you will want to find a high-quality food. You want to make sure that they'll get, you know, all the nutrition, the nutrition that they need in adulthood. Their nutritional needs change a little bit, right? They don't need as much protein because they're not growing. So they need a little less protein um, and, you know, a little less fat typically than they need at the puppy stage. So you're going to want to look for a food that has a high quality protein, like we were just talking about first, that animal protein first. And then, you know, the amount of time that it takes to transition really depends on what you plan to feed your dog. A lot of times you'll find on the bag a food they'll tell you how long they think it should take to switch and transition that food. For example, you know, if you're switching from a small breed puppy formula to a small breed adult formula, you know, you might want to take four to seven days to kind of little by little, you know, at least like, you know, 25% of the new food, 75% of the old food the first day, then you might move to like closer to 50% of each, you know, the second day, a little closer to, you know, 75% of the new food, 25% of the old food, you know, so you're going to kind of transition, you know, gently over to the new food. So most foods will tell you that, that you need to do that. If you're like, 
for example, if you're switching from Biljack puppy food to an to a Biljack adult food, right? Whether it's a small breed to small breed, you know, um, it doesn't. You you don't really need to take that time to switch. You know, you don't need to transition, right? You can just go ahead and transition over as soon as you run out of your puppy food. You can transition over to your adult food. So there's no switching needed. It's kind of interesting. One of the things about Biljack, if you have a dog that does not have a sensitive stomach. So, you know, if they're pretty easygoing, they don't have a lot of sensitivities. A lot of times you can switch from whatever brand to Biljack without that transition because of the way that Biljack is, right? Because it's just so, it's easy to digest. Dogs love it. So um, what's most important is that you're measuring and kind of making sure that you're not overfeeding them in the process. But, um, But some foods, like I said, do tell you on the bag, what do you need to do and how should you transition if you're transitioning to one of their foods? Yeah, that's very helpful. And it's it's true when you are transitioning within Bill Jack, it does. I'm sure it's within the way that that it's made, but it is much easier on the uh, the dog's tummies. So that and I can attest for that. And what makes Bill Jack such a great solution for today's pet parents and feeding their pets? I guess in all stages. Yeah, you know, I you know we really do try to look at you know not just their puppy stage or adult stage, but all different kinds of stages and challenges, right, that you might have when you're feeding your dog. And so, you know, we you know, we use 25 pounds of fresh chicken to make a 30-pound bag of Biljack adult formula food, for example. So that's really, that's really critical using that really fresh protein. And, you know, it's not frozen, that, that fresh chicken, it goes right in fresh. And then it is cooked very gently and that helps to preserve those nutrients, right? We try to get them at the beginning when they're fresh. We don't want to denature them then. And then when we cook them, we want to cook them very gently so that we can help preserve the nutrition that's in them. So that's really, really critical. And, you know, we we really look at, you know, what are all the options that are needed? You know, there are some dogs that are sensitive and it could be that they have sensitive skin. It could be that they have sensitive stomachs. It could be maybe that you want them to have a little bit more immune support. Uh, and so, you know, we have um, two different sensitive solutions formulas to be able to address those needs and, and you know, be able to serve, you know, serve your dog and, and still have them, you know, have a great, tasty, yummy experience. Because, you know, if they're not eating their food, then they're not getting all the nutrition that they need every day. And so it's really interesting. I mean, dogs and, and people too, but dogs have a certain number of essential amino acids that they need to get. And they can't make them on their own. Like they can't break them down from other things that they eat. They have to get them specifically out of their food. And so, um, so we're always, you know, so focused at Bill Jack about making sure that all of that nutrition is in there that they need to be able to be healthy overall. And so we, you know, we have um, also our picking a more line. You know, we talked a little bit about picking a more puppy, but picking a more adult food. Um, really, we get a lot of really great comments about it. And you know, what's really special about it is it has chicken liver in it, some extra chicken liver, and that really, you know, helps them to smell that food a little bit easier. And it's just a little bit more enticing than our regular food, which is hard to imagine because our regular food, we get a lot of comments on our regular food that, you know, our regular food is actually, you know, in a lot of cases, easy to chew. But we hear on that on the puppy side uh, that, you know, when dogs are teething, sometimes they're not real excited about eating really hard, crunchy food. Our food is a little, you know, softer might be the, you know, it's a little less crunchy, right? So it's a much easier for your puppy to be able to break up that food without having to chomp down on it. And so that really can help from a puppy perspective on puppy food, but it also helps on the other side right on the senior side of things um, when your dog gets older you know they may be having some jaw problems or some teeth challenges and so if that's the case sometimes um, you know, maybe they've lost some teeth uh, a lot of times they can eat bill jack foods without having an issue because we don't cook them at a high temperature and, and high pressure and that high temperature and high pressure makes them hard you know kind of hard pieces and so we don't do that so because of that there makes it a lot easier to chew and that sometimes can be really important to people you know it makes you know people can't find something to eat or dry food for their dog to eat you know so sometimes feeding a lot of wet food someone doesn't want to do that. They want to keep their teeth healthy, you know, have them have something crunchy as much as they can as a foundation for their nutrition. So it's really, really important um, to some people. And we love to hear that feedback, right? That, hey, I finally found something that my dog can eat. Well, and, and we've talked about it in the past about Francesca. She, you know, she almost lived till 18 and she was having very, we were having a hard time getting her to eat as her scent had uh, started to go. She, her mm-hmm. vision went and the picky no more is what saved her. I mean, she loved it. It was easy for her to eat. It motivated her to eat. So it was kind of like an answer to our solutions. And all have had a very sensitive stomach. So your sensitive food helped her because she had a lot of issues and a 
lot of immune issues too. So I found that to be very, very helpful for her. So, and then of course, we're going to talk about my favorite thing, which are the little treats. <laughs> the little jacks. Those are my uh those are my go-to lure for my kids to make sure that they that they're happy, that they do their little trip. We trained Sassy all on those. She learned all of her commands. I went up, I pulled Joel up and I did Joel Silverman's little training things and she uh -huh. learned all oh her basic gosh. commands. Yep. <laughs> yep. And, and it's been like about four months and she learned them and she learned them on those treats, which all of mine, no matter what dog school I ever, you know, whatever obedience school I I always had those treats, which made other people want to have my treats. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, you're really. <laughs> so, yeah. So now where can the listeners go to get more information about Bill Jack and about everything that you guys have, the treats, the food, uh, the newsletter, which I love to get every month? Yeah, you know, come out to our website. That's a great place to start. It's BillJack.com, B-I-L dash jac.com and we have just a ton of information out there obviously we can help you choose a food if you need it we we have what's new usually you know featured on that front page we have a where to buy section so you can find out you know which food you're looking for where you might be able to find it near you which is really great you know we're we also have a, a really awesome pet parent section and we put a lot of our articles from our uh, best friends club which you can join in that pet parent section we put a lot of our articles out on our blog so that you know they're out there for people to be able to search and learn about and we we have fun articles that we do some months about like can your dog see is your dog color blind right so <laughs> things like that or we also do um you know more specific nutritional pieces about you know how to transition your puppy for example to adult food uh, so you know we so we have so much out there in case you have a question you might be able to look there and be able to get an answer and it's real easy you just can sign up with your email and we send you the newsletter and you can even get some coupon offers too you can say hey, i want to you know save on dry food or you know i want to um, save on treats so there's a, a real great option to be able to do that as well so there's so much so much out on the website to, to see and to kind of uh, play with that that's true and that newsletter i love it and also the coupons always come in handy so especially in during these times so well mm -hmm. kim as always i thank you for being our guest and for sharing such helpful nutritional advice for pet parents looking to make the switch from puppy food to adult food and to maintain their pup's health all through this time. So thank you for making, sometimes it could be a challenging time. Thank you for making it easier and very informative. So I thank you very much. Thank you. We'll be back in just a moment. Begging to hear more of your favorite show? <laughs> Full episodes of all our shows are available on demand. Go to PetLifeRadio.com to fetch our entire lineup of possum pet podcasts. Also, dig us up in iHeartRadio and iTunes. Let's talk pets. <laughs> Live and on demand only from Pet Life Radio. We would like to thank our guests this week. And also, as our doggy divas always say, Please love your pets because they love you unconditionally. And please remember to adopt, foster, spay, neuter, and microchip. And as always, please have a great Diva Week, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Doggy Diva Show. To find out more about Susan Marie and the Doggy Divas, visit them at their website, thedoggydiva.com, and on Facebook at The Doggy Diva Show. Tell your fellow pet parents about it. We look forward to having you join us again for the next episode. See you soon. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.